Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will learn how to create a photo gallery. Without further ado, let's jump right into the action. All right, so here is the home page of my public facing WordPress site. And if I use my navigation menu to navigate to my photo gallery page, we can see that currently this page only consists of a bit of dummy or filler content. So our goal for this lesson is to replace this with real photo gallery content. So if I want to make changes to this page, I can just look up here in the top bar and use this edit page button. All right, and then down within this main content field, let me get rid of this text. And instead I will say below is a collection of some of my favorite photographs. Then I will drop down to a new line. So here's my cursor. And now I want to create a photo gallery. So a grid of images. So maybe I want there to be four images per row. So one image here, one image here, one image here, and one image here. And then if the user clicks on any one of those four images, they can view the larger full resolution copy of the photograph. So if I want to create a photo gallery, my first step is to use this button right here that reads add media. And let's pay attention to this left hand side of this pop up screen. Currently we are viewing the insert media screen and our goal is to create a photo gallery. So we actually want to switch to this create gallery screen. So go ahead and click that. Okay, and now we just build up a collection of images that will make up our photo gallery. Currently, this media library link is selected. And this is basically WordPress asking me if I want to use any of my previously uploaded images in my photo gallery. In my case, these are the only two images that I've uploaded in the past and I don't want to use those in my photo gallery. So I'm going to need to upload new photographs from my hard drive to fill up this gallery. So to do that, I'm going to click on this upload files button. Then I will click on select files. And from here, it's up to you to find the photographs on your computer's hard drive that you want to use in your photo gallery. So in my case, I have a folder on my desktop named assets, and I'm going to use these eight images. You can click and drag to select multiple images to upload at once. Or if you're using Windows, you should be able to hold down either the control or shift key and then individually click on the different images you want. Or if you're using a Mac, you can use the command key or the Apple key and hold that down and then you can click on the individual images that you are interested in. Okay, now depending on the speed of your internet connection, and how many photos you uploaded and how large each file was, the uploading process might take a minute or two or maybe even five or 10 minutes. But once it's complete, you will see thumbnails for all of your images here. And basically any image that has a check mark next to it will be added to this new photo gallery that we are trying to create. So for example, all of the images we see right now except for these two are the images that I just right now uploaded and they all have check marks. But if for some reason I did want to use one of these two images that I uploaded on a previous day, I could just click on them. So now they have the check marks, uh, but obviously I don't actually want to use them. So then I can just click on them again to remove the check marks. All right. So once you've selected all of the images that you want to use in your gallery and they have check marks on them, go ahead and click this blue create a new gallery button. From this screen, you are free to drag and drop to reorder your gallery. So maybe I want this elephant photograph to come first, and then I want the cat wearing glasses to come second. You get the idea. Also, you are free to add captions for each photo here. So I could click here and say elephant with baby elephant. Maybe I don't need a caption for this cat photograph, but maybe for this cupcake photo, I want to say cupcakes. You get the idea. Now I do want to bring your attention to this right hand column. So the first option we see here is link to, and this is what controls what will happen when a visitor of our website clicks on one of these thumbnail images. 
So if I click this, I'm going to select Media File. So that way, when a visitor clicks on one of the thumbnails, it will take them directly to the full large resolution original copy of the photograph. The next option is Columns. You are free to choose however many photos you want to be per row. I think it would look good if there were four photographs per row, so I choose four. I'm not sure why you would want to randomize the order, uh, but you're free to check that if you want to. I will leave it unchecked so that the order that I created will stay intact. And then the last option, size, controls the size of the image before the user clicks on one of the images. You're free to change this and experiment with it, but I would say that nine times out of 10, thumbnail is probably the best bet. Okay, I'm happy with those options, so I will click this bottom right insert gallery button. Here we can see our new photo gallery, and why don't we go ahead and update this page using this blue update button, and then see what it looks like on the public front end of our website. So up here we see page successfully created, and I can use this link to jump to my public website. Let me scroll down a bit. Looks good. And if I click on the elephant thumbnail, it takes me to the original large resolution, very high quality copy of the photograph. And then I can just use my web browser's back arrow button to go back a page. Okay, and practice makes perfect, so why don't we try to create another photo gallery? I wanna point out that we can include multiple galleries on the same page. So I want to edit this photo gallery page again, so up in my top bar, I will use this edit page link. So down here within our main content field, I will click to the right of the gallery to place my cursor there, and then I will use my enter or return key to drop down to a new line. And why don't we create a bit of text that reads scenic photos. And maybe instead of standard paragraph text, I want this to look like a headline. So I just select this text and then up here from this menu, I will choose heading level two. And then right below that headline, I will just push enter to drop down to a new line. And now why don't I add another photo gallery? So my cursor is where I want it. We can see it blinking. And now I'm just going to use this add media button. I will click create gallery over here in the left hand column. And I could create a new gallery by reusing some of these images that I've already uploaded but I wanna upload a few new images, so click Upload Files here, and then Select Files. I have a folder on my computer named Scenic, and it contains these four photographs that I want to use. Okay, looks good. We can see that the four new images I just uploaded are the only four with the check mark on them. Perfect, those are the only four that I want in my new image gallery. So I will just click create new gallery down here. Maybe I want this mountain to be the first photo so I can just drag and drop. Over on this right hand column, I'll change this to media file and I want four per row. So I will change columns to four, a four column grid. And now I can just click insert gallery. And there we have it. Now, before I save this page, I do wanna point out that it's not like you can only add photo galleries to a page that has a title of photo gallery. You can add a photo gallery to any page and any post. Okay, so feel free to use this technique wherever you see fit on your website. Having said that, I will click the blue update button. Okay, here we see page successfully updated. I will use this link to preview things. Let me scroll down a bit. Perfect, so here's our first photo gallery, here's our new headline, and here's the second photo gallery. And if I click on one of these thumbnails, so let me click on this one, it takes me to the original full resolution copy of the photograph. Now you'll notice that I need to use my web browser's back button to navigate back to the website if I wanna click on a different photograph. So again, I would have to click the back button and maybe I want to view this fourth photograph. Cool, and then I would have to click the back button again. So we can see that that is not ideal. 
In a perfect world, our visitors would not have to keep clicking the back button on their browser. In a perfect world, maybe when a visitor clicks one of these thumbnails, it would open a larger copy of the image that maybe takes up this portion of the screen. And then the outer edges of the screen would maybe be a slightly transparent black background. And maybe there would be a small X button right about here. You get the idea. And the user could maybe click forward and back arrows to switch between different photographs. That kind of a layout and behavior is often referred to as a light box or a modal. Or sometimes it's even referred to as a pop-up photo gallery or a pop-up slideshow or pop-up carousel. But most of the time we will hear that referred to as either a light box or a modal. Anyways, long story short, the point that I'm trying to make is that that behavior would be much better than what we currently have. Because visitors of our website should not have to use the back button in their browser to switch between the different full resolution copies of the photos. It's just not a user friendly experience. So in our next lesson, we will learn how to customize WordPress to use a light box or a modal or a pop-up type of when visitors click on one of our thumbnails. To pique your interest maybe a little bit more, uh, in other words, our next lesson will be our first exposure to something called a plugin. So in our next lesson, we will answer the question, what in the world is a plugin? And we will leverage the power of plugins to create the exact photo gallery experience that we want. It should be a lot of fun. Let's keep things rolling and I will see you in the next lesson.